This battleground is not only in the Supreme Court, but it's in Iowa. Mm -hmm. People said, you know, and it's not a field of dreams we're talking about. <laughs> What are, we, what are we talking about, Jones? What's going on in well, Iowa? Well, you're talking about a class action suit that's going on in Iowa where they're, they're trying to um, bring the issue of discrimination up, and they're, they're trying to do it in a different way. I mean, normally people want to cry, um, you know, out, right, overt discrimination, you know, racial epithet. Or, or and something. it made it more difficult. Yeah, and it, and it made it more difficult, or, you know, or either that or they wanted to say that the hiring, you know, the, the testing was, you know, um, slanted or something of that nature. Right. But now this, this um, class action is trying to prove that um, the social environment and also um, statistics can prove out the fact that discrimination exists. So it's you can look at percentages and things of that nature. In, implicit bias theory is what we're talking about. Yeah, and even though we have the situation with Walmart that was, you know, recently, um, you know, the Supreme Court refused to hear because they felt that there wasn't enough um, of a thread of, of um, cohesiveness for them to be able to make a decision as to whether or not discrimination existed widespread um, for towards women um, in terms of uh, whether or not they were promoted or are hired for Walmart. This is basically saying there is enough statistical proof to prove that if you look at the percentage of people, similar to what we, we talked about with the um, the fire department. Right. If you look at the fire department, you see that 1% or 2% of the entire fire department mm -hmm. is people of color, right. then something's wrong. You know, let's look at everything, the testing, the hiring, right. all of that other stuff. It's that same type of um, idea where they're saying, we're not waiting for an outright racial remark or mm -hmm. a later letter or anything like that. And we're not wait, 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 waiting to look at the test and see whether or not the test is slanted. We just want to prove it out using the statistics. Well, I, I, the thing that I, I think is interesting about I I implicit uh, bias theory is that people, like, we, like for example, somebody might call you uh, uh, the N-word or whatever, so that's explicit. But then there are things that are going on in the person's mind that's unconscious that they are talking about that they, they do things to, to, to exert their beliefs that they think is common to way, the way society wants them to act. And so they have this implicit idea that they might not give an interview to somebody that deserved it, that happened to be a person of color versus giving it to somebody that's white. And that might be something that's such a subconscious action because it's been socialized into them to, to do that. So this is the thing that I talk about with this implicit bias theory. Now, the thing that I think is interesting about this particular lawsuit that, that should be making the news is this is the largest uh, lawsuit of people of color that ever, in terms of this 6,000 individuals that we're talking about. Well, and then one of the things that I, I, I thought about the article that, 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 that was interesting to me was that there's 2.7% black people that exist in, live in the state of Iowa. 2.4% of them work for the state of Iowa. Why is that? You know, I mean, nobody, I mean, nobody even dealt with that issue, which I thought was very interesting. I mean, why is it that everybody that seems to be a person of color is working for the state? Mm -hmm. Why are they not working anywhere else? Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, has anybody even looked into that particular issue as to why everybody gravitated to state employment versus um, private sector employment? And mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's just a sidebar. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you even thought about that, but it was something that had weighed on my mind. But, but the thing is, again, is this just people that are out there just making complaints? Is this black people are not satisfied and maybe they didn't qualify for some of these promotions? Or is there some type of proof that's out there, Laurie, that, that shows that the state has acted in a certain way to, 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 to hinder their advancement? Well, I think it's going to be very hard to prove because even if you come up with statistics, a lot of people, when they want mm -hmm. to be blind to something, they continue to be blind to it. And, and even though there are, st I think they're going to bring in studies where people have proven to people that they've mm -hmm. acted with racial bias, even when they don't think they've done it, you know, with, with some sort of a uh, um, testing process, it's still going to be difficult to prove that in each in these particular cases that that's the driving force. And one of them, you know, not to give them any ammunition, is that they could always turn it into something else. I know one of the, the um, complainants was saying that, you know, he had applied for a job and he had 29 years of experience in the, in the telecommunications field. field and, you know, he doesn't know why he couldn't get the job, you know, but they could turn around and you know, it could be ageism, yeah. you know. It could yeah. be that, you know, because, I mean, I, I, I know of people who, you know, they, they, they can't outright ask you your age during the interview, but they can ask. I, I know of somebody who's been asked, um, you know, what year did you graduate? You mm -hmm. know, which mm -hmm. you can pretty well graduate from high school. So I right. guess you can figure things out. So it could be ageism 
and then at that point you're going to start throwing monkey wrenches into the whole theory. But I think that what they, and, and again, when you're saying vaguely, you know, you don't know you're racist or you don't know you're biased, you know, but you're, it, it, you're um, showing bias is going to be a very difficult thing to prove overall because they're asking for a lot. They're asking for back wages mm -hmm. and, you know, things of that nature, which I, I, I doubt will and be it, coming it, from the government. And there's a lot of people that are watching this because the 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 lawsuits on the, on the way against several other states. It, it, you know, people forget that we talked about it on the show that there, 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 are, there are a lot of blacks that work for state government around this country. And so, you know, if, 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 if this is going on in this state, who knows what's happening in other states? And the thing that I, f I find that no one is talking about is that Governor uh, I think it was Vissack had a study that was done before he left, left office to, to look at this whole problem of um, blacks and, and hiring and, and, and promotions within the state. And the consultant came back and said, there's a problem. And here's the proof and all this all the information. There's a study done. Yet there's been no significant change to address that particular issue, which means that people don't feel it's expedient to, to address the issues of people of color. Part of that is because where is the, pol the political pressure being brought to bear? Where is the embarrassment? You know, do we need to go, you know, do we need to start going to the United Nations and say that we're, we're still operating in this whole fashion, separate but, uh, but, but and unequal? because we can't even have the, the same opportunities that the people that don't even have the same qualifications. You know, well, similar to a lot of our issues, most of the time they just wait for it to die down. And right. if you bring up something, whether it's an embarrassment to a particular company, you know, like Walmart, or you bring up something that's an embarrassment to the government, or what, they just wait until, you know, our racial profiling or things, they just right. wait until it dies down and then, you know, move on to the next thing. Isn't it interesting how affirmative action has, they had like three cases over the last four or five years we can't even get stop and frisk to the Supreme Court to even deal with that particular issue when you have something over 600,000 individuals being stopped and harassed in their own community. You've been reduced to being a second class citizen and you've been preyed upon because there's a profile of you being a suspect and there's a, there's a, there is an image that you are up to something. If that is not blatant, okay, what what is and you have audio tapes of you know you know the guy who taped in the precinct of them actually saying mm -hmm. you know things about you know most of the people in this area are perps and you know, that kind of thing and we have to look at the situation where we we talked about how the government is involved in this particular behavior that these police officers and in these 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 uh police departments are exhibiting within our community because they reward those, the, those negative behaviors that we, we consider negative in our community by harassing and arresting and, and detaining and, and convicting people of color in those communities because there's an economic incentive that's, in tied, that's been tied to that. No one has even addressed that in Congress to, to, to change that whole dynamic. Yeah, it's similar to the issue that we have going on here now in New York about the spying on the Muslim right. you know, community. This isn't the first time this has been brought up. You know, right. this situation of discrimination against the Muslim community since this whole, um, you know, uh, international um, situation is, has occurred. So, I mean, it's, it's like I said, normally they just wait until it dies down and then the right. next time it comes up, you know, there'll be a, a, an uproar and then they wait for it to die down again. This, so I would say to the Obama administration that when you look at what's going on with this whole affirmative action thing, let's not forget about the stop and frisk situation because people should be able to live in their community and be able to enjoy themselves, to be able to walk up and down the streets of their parents and their family members pay taxes to maintain and be treated the same way that they're being treated on Pennsylvania Avenue, just like they're being treated on Madison Avenue. Yeah, and I mean, it's unfortunate, but I, as I mentioned many times, I am very skeptical only because it's not a question of justice or right versus wrong, it's a question of money. And I think that, you know, a case like this, if it does, you know, if it is successful, there would be far-reaching repercussions in terms of precedent and then the lawsuits that will follow and state governments are already in trouble. So I can't see them allowing right. something like this, you know, to become that widespread.